You are watching the Control Design Educational Video Series, Discrete Control Basics, PLCs, and PACs. This video is brought to you by our sponsor, Unitronics. More information on our sponsor will be provided later on in this video. You can also find product and company information provided in the information section below. Today's presenter is Control Design Technical Editor, Dave Perkin. Much has been written about what is a programmable logic controller, a PLC, and a programmable automation controller, a PAC. If there is any real competition between the use of a PLC or a PAC, the game has already been played. The result was a draw, unless there are special circumstances or you are just a big fan of a particular platform or programming method. The fact is that big automation users, such as the automotive industry, have already picked a winner and it is likely a family of controllers from a single manufacturer that range from small to large system control capabilities. Other industry segments such as machine tools, metalworking machinery, machine builders, and OEM equipment suppliers have likely standardized on a controller or at least a controller brand. It certainly pays to minimize the number of controller suppliers. While a system integrator may sell services to support any controller manufacturer, it will have its favorite and it's likely based on a manufacturer, not whether it's a PLC or a PAC. We'll take a quick look at the history of the PLC and some of the similarities and differences between it and its newer sibling, the PAC. The PLC is the pioneer of the automation field and has been around since the late 1960s. It saw a massive growth in its use through the 70s and 80s. The PLC spread its wings in the 1980s when remote and distributed I.O. became popular. Although not discussed here, the industrial PC or PC-based control was going to take over the world in the 90s, but didn't. And in the early 21st century, the PAC was born. Automation grew with the development of PLCs and PACs. When the PLC was born, automation was using relays and sensors to control machines. Millions of relays. The PLC wasn't just replacing relays. It helped automation and its complexity to grow. You may say that all I need is a PLC or ask, isn't a PAC better and more capable? Forget about the comparisons. Most can do much of what the others can do, and almost as well. Yes, each type of controller does something better than the other. Your automation vendor can give you a sales pitch on that. However, technology has merged, or at least muddied the field, when it comes to a modern automation controller's capabilities and functionality. It's likely that any of them would work in an automation application, as long as the right size of controller is selected. There are many things to consider when selecting a modern automation controller, but capabilities and special requirements are two big hitters. A wide range of controllers are available. When selecting a controller, a first step is to determine what the customer's or factory standard controllers are. It may be a PLC, a PAC, or both. The standard may be well documented, or you may have to open some enclosure doors and do a survey. Some critical capabilities when selecting a PLC or PAC are the amounts of I.O., programming language, communications, and special requirements such as motion control or safety PLC functionality. These special circumstance applications need to be carefully considered. The size of the automation project is proportional to the size of the controller's capabilities, whether it's a PLC or a PAC. Although the trend is that a controller's physical size is shrinking, small, medium, and large controller capabilities are made for that simple reason. Count up the I.O. needed and clearly define the device's control, then plan for future expansion. Many controllers may reach their limit of I.O. in medium to large systems without proper selection. Ladder logic was the dominant language of the PLC from its birth through the early 90s, when IEC 61131, International Standard for Programmable Controllers, was published. An important part of that 10-part standard that covers programming is IEC 61131-3. The IEC 61131-3 standard's purpose was to bring consistency to all software products that conform to the standard. For example, a same look to function blocks, same inputs and outputs, providing quick understanding of logic and program flow. It also defines standard data type, naming conventions, and other programming basics. While both the PLC and PAC will always have ladder diagram, some of the other languages in the IEC 61131 standard are more prevalent in the PAC, including function block diagram, structured text, 
instruction list, and sequential function chart. Some PACs can be programmed in other languages as well. It's a special case if a controller needs to provide two, three, or more axes of coordinated motion, so choose carefully. Many controllers can talk to a server drive using a variety of communication methods to command speed or position, but few can coordinate that motion as needed to draw a circle or perform electronic line shafting or camming functions. Safety performed in a PLC is another special case. These motion or safety requirements narrow the choices for automation controllers. While industry often calls it a safety PLC, it's probably a pack with built-in safety. Most controllers have Ethernet as a communication option and, in the age of the Industrial Internet of Things, IIoT, should be required. However, don't forget the communication protocol. Ethernet TCP and Ethernet IP are two completely different protocols, and this can be a big differentiator in controllers. There are many industrial Ethernet protocols to choose from, and the speed of communication and the number of connections are important to quantify during selection. There is a big difference between an information message and real-time control when it comes to Ethernet. Also, the PAC is a better communicator, often talking to many more devices at the same time than a PLC. In the past, the amount of controller memory was a problem, and controllers did run out of memory. So always plan for expansion and maybe select a larger controller. For the most part, technology has fixed that problem. PLCs and PACs usually have plenty of memory for the program needed. Today, the differentiators may be the added memory through USB or micro SD devices, or use of onboard memory to log data or store program descriptors. When choosing a controller, quantify your requirements as small, medium, or large. Understand the hardware and software capabilities and special requirements. And be sure to pick the factory favorite. Whether it's a PLC or a PAC, it will work great in most applications for decades. Thank you for watching the Control Design Educational Video Series, Discrete Control Basics, PLCs, and PACs. This video has been brought to you by our sponsor, Unitronics. Unitronics has designed and manufactured innovative PLC and HMI controllers since 1989. These all-in-one controllers are easy to use, efficient, and affordable for all your automation needs. 